David Kane here with another IB question bank question in topic 4.1 oscillations. We're talking about simple harmonic motion and the greenhouse effect. It says a body is displaced from equilibrium. State two conditions necessary for the body to execute simple harmonic motion. So this, this is a question on uh, the definition of simple harmonic motion and, and how its properties are determined. Uh, and we know that for simple harmonic motion, it has two key founding principles, two key founding properties, and that is that the acceleration of the body is proportional and opposite to the displacement of the body from its equilibrium position. Uh, helps to spell equilibrium correctly, but that's the idea. The acceleration of the body is proportional to the displacement, so the further away it is from the equilibrium position, the larger the acceleration, and opposite to the displacement from equilibrium. So if you pull it up, acceleration is down. If you push it down, acceleration is up. Uh, we then move on to a simple model of a methane molecule uh, made of hydrogen and carbon. And we can think of them as two masses attached by a spring. The hydrogen, ati hydrogen atom is much less massive than the carbon atom, such that any displacement of the carbon atom may be ignored. So we're just talking about a hydrogen atom bouncing back and forth on the spring attached to the carbon atom. The graph below shows the variation with time of the displacement uh, from the equilibrium position. So we see the, the the uh, hydrogen molecule bouncing down and up and down and up as time goes on. The mass of the hydrogen atom is, is given. Use the data from the above graph to determine the amplitude of the oscillation. All right, we have to recognize that amplitude is the maximum displacement from equilibrium. So this is our equilibrium line and we want to know how far from that equilibrium line do we get. Well, that, that's one place where it occurs. There are other places, of course, there and there, but we only need one to make the measurement. So we're going to find this length. How far from the equilibrium position do we get? So we just have to read over to here, 1.5. Of course, we do need to be careful and check our units. Taking a look at uh, the axes labeled, we see that x is measured in meters, but it's uh, actually times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So our answer is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Next, we want to show that the frequency of the oscillation is 9.1 times 10 to the 13 hertz. And this is a show that question. Every time we're given the answer that we're meant to show, we have to arrive at this answer. This has to be the very last thing that we write. We're not allowed to use it until then. So we want to think about how can we get frequency from the information given. Well, we have a time domain. And so we can use the fact that frequency is equal to one divided by the period. So really we just need to figure out what the period of motion for this is. The period of motion is the amount of time that it takes for one complete, mo one complete copy of the motion to occur. So if we start at the top, we want to know the amount of time it takes for it to go down and back up to that same position. So that's one copy of the motion. How much time does that take? Now you may be tempted to just start at the beginning because it looks like we start at the peak. I think that's probably an okay choice, but when I look at this region of the graph, I'm really having a hard time reading what's happening uh, just because the, the graduations there are, are, are just making it a little bit hard to read and that, that major axis line is making it a little bit hard to read. So you probably could just assume that the peak occurs at time zero and that would probably be fine. But I'm gonna choose to work with this point because to me, that's very clear where, at what time, uh, we cross the equilibrium position. So I want to know 
how long does it take for this part of the motion to occur again? We go down, up, and back down to right here. Not this spot, that's only half the period. Down and up. We need to go all the way back around. So see how we're crossing the x-axis going down, crosses, crossing the x-axis going down. These two points are equivalent. So the period of motion is going to be this amount of time. So I just need to make a measurement of that. That's going to be 1 divided by the final time. Take the initial time. All right, taking a look at our scale, I see that between this time, point 1, and this time, point 1, 5, uh, we go up 5 hundredths of a time unit, but there are 10, de 10 delineations, which means that it takes 2 delineations to equal 1 hundredth of a second. So that's 1, point 1, 0, point 1, 1, point 1, 2, point 1, 3, point 1, 4. Like that. 0 0.14. Same thing over here. 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. So take 0 0.03. Now, of course, I need to consider as well the scale times 10 to the negative 13. So that gives me 0 0.11 times 10 to the negative 13. And we'll do 1 divided by all of that, and I get 9.09 .09 times 10 to the positive 13 hertz, which is approximately equal to 9.1 times 10 to the 13 hertz. 